Hey traders, uh, today we're going to be looking at, across the market, we're going to be looking at um, uh, across the board with the stock market the and also the metals and miners and just some key levels technically on a technical analysis basis today, key levels that we should be focusing on uh, this week moving forward. So let's get straight into it. Don't place a trade based on what you'll see in this video because there is no guarantees of making a profit in the market. It takes you a long time to become a good trader. So this video here is just to educate you to become a much better trader. Alrighty traders, so let's get straight into it. I'm gonna start with the Dow Jones, S&P, NASDAQ, Russell, and then I'll get into silver and gold and also the mining stocks. So I'll start off with the good old diamonds, the good old DJ. And again, guys, this is just gonna be short-term technical analysis. Long term, the big picture, I do see by the end of this year, we're probably going to be experiencing a really significant move to the upside. But over the next week or two, we could be going through a bit of a shake and bake period as what I call it. So that's what I'm going to be talking about in today's video. So let me just bring up, let me just bring this over here for a minute. And uh, the software that I like to use myself personally, guys, is the TC2000. And the reason why is because it allows me to run my scans which is phenomenal because with my trading system that I use, I like to have the, the scans scan through the ETFs. I can scan through all the different stocks. I can even scan the Forex market and the futures and so on and so forth as well. Uh, sorry, not the futures, but the Forex market. I can scan all the different stocks. And so especially when I'm looking for amazing opportunities through, um, with my daily charts or I'm looking for amazing opportunities, say on a short-term basis, five-minute charts or 15-minute charts, the software really allows me to find these trades uh, for there. So, uh, but it, it all starts with having a good trading system, right guys? So again, if, if you're interested in join, if you're interested in learning my trading system and how I trade the market, I'm running a webinar at the very first thing in the description. You can actually grab that and grab that and get access to all the details about how I trade the markets. But I just that's just an update on the software that I use myself personally. And so by looking at what we're looking at here when it comes to the Dow Jones Industrial Average on a short term basis, as I said before traders, that on a short term basis, we can see that uh, over the next maybe week, we may go through a bit of a shake and make period, maybe up and down, up and down, up and down volatile period. We may go through that. Uh, but I do believe November, December are gonna be very, very bullish years. So we have to wait and see that. But on a short term basis, we can see that what's happened here on the Dow Jones is we've actually had a bit of a a bit of a sideways channel through here. Uh, if you can see that the last sort of couple of, say, weeks, or probably probably, probably close to a month, we've had this uh, 35,000 here, and then also we've had this 33,000 also through here as well. So we've had a very good sideways range. Now, we've, now what we've had here is we've had a nice higher low. So we've had a, a double bottom, ran up, also a double top, then came down, created a higher low, and now we're breaking out. So that's actually a very, very good, strong bullish sign. So, and the Dow Jones is almost getting getting very, very close to making an all-time new high. So I wouldn't be too surprised if the Dow Jones did actually start to make a move to the upside on that through there. So again, we, we, we may get a little bit of a sideways movement, just looking at the futures, uh, looking at the futures market right now. How are we? How are we looking at the futures market? We can actually see we're actually a lot of green that's happening across the board. We've got a lot of green on the S and P right now. We have Nasdaq nicely green, and the Dow Jones Russell green as well too. Uh, we have oil is up as well, and then we have a, a mixed mixed bag when it comes to the cryptocurrencies. But uh, so that's what's happening right now on the good old futures markets, but on the on the stock market, that's what we're seeing through there. It does look like that 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 the Dow Jones chart does look like it's probably likely to start to make a very nice move to the upside. The interesting thing about if we have a look at the say this is the last sort of this is the last sort of three months with it zoomed up with the data. If I go to my one year worth of charts on the Dow Jones, if I go to my one year worth of charts like that, you can see what's happening through here. We've had a very, 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 very good strong basing out period. And the pattern that we're seeing through here is a head and shoulder formation. Now, the, t the old school thoughts were, if we have this shoulder, head, and then another shoulder formation, the old school thought is that if we get a head and shoulder formation, then that's probably likely to be bearish. And a lot of the times you'll see these markets create these head and shoulder formations, 
But once the head and shoulder formation, when we do get this head and shoulder formation, a lot of the times, the market will actually, this will actually be a continuation formation to the upside. Now, not 100% of the time, but if you're looking at a probability, a lot of the times that the market will create the head and shoulder formation, but we won't complete it. What, is, what does completed mean? We'll have the shoulder, head, shoulder, but we won't actually break the neckline. Most of the time, they won't actually break the neckline to complete it, to actually send this thing down. It'll actually hold here, and then it will actually rally to the upside. And even if we do get something like this here, a lot of the times it will just completely reverse anyway. So these head and shoulder formations, a lot of the times are actually continuation patterns in the markets. And that's one thing I really have found, especially over the last three or four years of trading these markets, I've noticed is, oh, here's a head and shoulder formation, and then it'll go up. And oh, here's a head and shoulder formation, and then it would go up. So looking at through here, the first thing I'm noticing on the Dow Jones is we're getting a, a, a big head and shoulder formation here. But if we have a look at this from a sort of a, a non-technical point of view, if I take everything off the screen here for a minute, I can see how that we've had a very good, strong, strong, strong level of support, probably around that level through there, which would be that level through there. And then we also have had, if I'm looking at the past as well too, probably maybe even a bit lower than that, maybe somewhere through there, if I'm looking at maybe a resistance line, you can see that this really, this whole box is really being sideways. Now, the reason why this is powerful is because this could be the calm before the storm in the Dow Jones. The Dow Jones hasn't been as strong as the NASDAQ and the S&P. So maybe, just maybe, this whole period through here is indeed a one big massive resting phase in the market before we actually see another move to the upside. And so that's what we may be getting right now. We're starting to get an, a slight increase in volume as well too over the last sort of couple of days as this starts to kick in. If I if I go to my DIA, which is the ETF, um, you can see, yeah, not really much. Oh, actually, I've, I've already drawn that through there, haven't I? I haven't, that's pretty awesome. I haven't looked at this for a while, but you can see how this has been sort of just respecting this level and now we're now we're higher low through here and we're, getting, we're starting to make a move to the upside so again i wouldn't be too surprised to see the dow jones start to make a move up if we have a look at the s p 500 same sort of thing as well too we're starting to get a lot of a, a, a bit more of a stronger bid through here the thing about the s p is that we we uh we, we've done a lot more upside compared to the Dow Jones. So maybe just maybe the Dow Jones is going to start to make that move as well. But you can see really over the last six months, the S&P really hasn't done much. A lot of people are saying that this is this, this thing's overvalued, you know, and it's it's going to crash and we're, we're going to see more downside. That possibly can happen if technically we start to see this thing roll over, then yeah, we have to keep an eye on that. We have to watch that. But looking at these markets and looking at what we're seeing through here, all I'm seeing right now is that this market has actually just actually done pretty much nothing over the last since 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 June, right? It's gone up, it's gone down, it's gone up, it's gone down. But now look what's happening. We had a bit of a double bottom. So on a, remember, guys, on a technical basis, a technical analysis is all about reading what the market's telling you right now. And then as the as the bars go on, we need to continue that story. So if we're in an upward trend, we go with that story. If it starts with downward trend, we go on that story. If it starts to go back up, the upward trend, right? We start that we bend and mold when it comes to what the market is telling us and what's going on. And so once again, if I look at the last sort of six months, you can see here support, support, and now we've actually had a higher low and we're breaking out very strongly through there. If I look at the SPY here for a minute, and the SPY, I actually had a long-term trend line through here. That may or may not be valid. Let me actually take that off through there. Uh, what I don't want to use is I don't want to use a trend line to say, oh, well, it's definitely going to bounce off here because it's really the market, right? The market is the most important thing to us when it comes to that sort of stuff. So looking at the SPY, we can see that we've had, once again, a bit of a double bottom. And then we've had now a higher low, and it's actually a very strong higher low off this point through here. And now we've actually had a bit of a strong move up. So a bit of a gap up and another gap up. Looks like we're starting to really gallop up out of this point through here. Looking at the SPY, if I look at this right through there, which is basically the S&P 500 as well too. And then we can see we've had a very strong momentum on the downside through here. So very, very, very good strong momentum on the downside, this whole pullback. 
And then as you can see, it's rejected this a lot of the times. And if I actually bring this back down to maybe even more through there to say, you know what? Notice how we every time we actually hit this line, we could not close above it, could not close above it, could not close above it. Then we created a higher low through here and then we actually gapped up, closed above it, gapped up again. So we're starting to get a lot of a, a pretty strong movement to the upside when it comes to the SPY, which is basically the S&P 500. And that's the same. You can see here on the SP 500, you can see the same sort of thing. We had a lot of, a lot of uh, touches through here. And then suddenly we had a very big breakup and moved to the upside. So you can see that's what's really going on through on the S&P 500. And on the NASDAQ as well too, you can see the NASDAQ same situation when it comes to this short-term momentum pullback. We had a short-term momentum pullback. We've had, we definitely had a lot of support. You can see my trend line through here. We had a bouncing off there, bouncing off that point through there, mid of September. And then now recently what happened was we actually had a bouncing off that level there and now we had a bit of a gap up and now we're running. So this is a very high probability that this is gonna be a breakaway gap. A breakaway gap is something like, uh, let's see right here. This, this would be a good example of a breakaway gap. A breakaway gap is that a little gap up and then we start to make a move up. So we had a little bit of a gap up and start to make a move up. There's a high probability that this pullback here is now coming to an end and we're now starting to likely to continue this very strong upward movement in the markets through there. So if we have a look at the weekly charts and we have a look at the last sort of weekly charts, weekly charts are actually looking quite nicely. We're looking actually really, really nice, especially on the NASDAQ. We had this nice higher low, higher low. And notice on the weekly charts, and this is one of the reasons why I personally, when I'm trading my trading system, again, link in the description, I'll teach you all the details about my trading system. One of the things I love doing is I love trading with that weekly trend. Because look at this here, every time I got a bit of a pullback, higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low. Look at this here, pullback, it's probably gonna be another higher low before we raise up. So I still have a 17,000 17, uh, print when it comes to the NASDAQ through there. So that's what we're looking at through there. Let's actually have a quick look at, there was uh, the Russell. Let's go have a look at the daily charts. We're gonna look at the Russell, there we go, Russell 2000. The Russell 2000 has indeed definitely been in a very, if we have a look at this weekly chart, notice this range through here. So this this tells me, this is a, this is definitely a calm before the storm. We've had a lot of time through here. So this tells me that obviously the Russell 2000 stocks haven't been really moving much. It's just been sideways. This is the time to definitely be alert on the Russell 2000s because we could be getting ready for a breakout soon. And if I bring up the one, last one year, we could be getting ready for a break, a very, 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 very good strong breakout soon. And if we do get that, that could be the start of a really, really significant move because we've had a lot of time here or a lot of sideways, what I call resting phase, a lot of time where the market's just rested and hasn't been doing anything. It has not going up, not going down. All this here is what I call an energy building phase. So it's building a lot of energy. And then when we start to break out, we're likely to make uh, probably something like this through here. When we build a lot of energy through here, then we start to make a very, very good sort of strong movement um, on the, you know, something, a, a big breakout like something like that. So we really need to, uh, I'm personally going to be watching the Russell 2000 because it's going to definitely give us some entry signals there. And not only that, but the stocks within the Russell 2000 as well too could produce or could yeah could could produce a lot of good opportunities for of a trading opportunities here. So please keep an eye on that guys because it could be quite nice for us. Moving over now, let's actually go through to the oh let me actually, let me let me touch on the transports here. So the transports is definitely starting to make its way up. If you guys remember, I did a video back a while ago saying traders, we're getting back down towards a support level here now and we're probably going to bounce off this long-term support level. So get ready for a bit of a bounce out of the out of the transports. And I did that back, and you can see I've actually had two arrows here. When we actually got this bounce on, the, on this second one, it was around about here that I started saying, you know what traders, we're probably going to start to get a nice bounce because we've got this higher low and now we've got another higher low through here and now we're actually breaking up with, with volume as well, as you can see. So... Now it looks like transports is getting ready for another move to the upside. Looks like it looks like we've just started that move as well too. So we had a pullback to the support level, that big long-term weekly support level, and now we're breaking up. If you remember that, guys, I did that about 
um, I did a video back uh, just after we got this bounce around about that 250 level there. So we are that's where we are right now. And I do expect to see uh, the trend. This tells me that the transports is starting to kick back into gear again. And so therefore, with all the pent up demand, we're probably likely to see a transports boom out of out of that level. And you can see once again, what's happened over the last three months with the, with the data. You can see the last sort of couple of days, lots of increase in volume coming out of this here. Bit of a gap up. To me, that's a, that's actually a bit of a breakaway gap. And now we're actually starting to make a move up through there. And we're also now getting a very nice close above this resistance point through there. So looking at the silver and gold market, this is a very, very interesting one when it comes to the silver and, and gold market. Firstly, on a gold level, we're still stuck in this overall sort of uh, triangle pattern. We do have, a, a, it's just on a short term basis anyway, the last sort of like maybe since the start of this start of this year, we've now been forming in this very big triangle pattern. You can see it actually rejected off this level here. So the key levels I'm for is where is gold going to break out? Because uh, it's, it's definitely going to tell us where this thing is likely to go. Now, if we do start to hold here for some reason and we start to make a move up out of this, maybe this pullback through here, I'm not saying it's going to be, but we need to wait. Maybe this pullback here is a bit of a shaking of the weekends. Maybe some people got into here but didn't realize that it was still stuck in the triangle pattern. But if we do start to do something like this, and then we start to make a move back up like that, like so, then that tells me gold is getting ready to take on some serious price action. Because we've been, we've been if you look at the last sort of, last sort of 12 months, we've been basically doing nothing absolutely nothing and and you can see gold has been just very very especially the last sort of maybe especially this point through here we've been doing nothing so once we start to break out of this level here we're once again we're probably like to take on some really really serious price action on there if i'm looking at some sort of longer term sort of trend lines i can see that there's definitely a trend line coming through possibly through there somewhere i would say Yeah, something through, I would say something through there. Because you can see how it bounced off there, bounced off there. We definitely had a lot of sort of confluence through there. And now we're getting this whole level coming through. If I take this off the screen, you can see how we got a bit of a bounce off that level through there. And now we're getting a bounce off there. So that actually could be something we could be looking at through there. And once again, looking at this shorter term, this shorter term trend line, we definitely had a trend line coming through there. So something through there, but uh, I wouldn't really wouldn't really class that as as a level there. We definitely had that going on through there. So that going through there, but I'll just leave that through there. But essentially, as you can see, traders, that we're definitely stuck in this stronger pattern, and we could just, we just by looking at this for the last sort of couple of years, we have basically been doing nothing since sideways. Uh, and we haven't really been getting a lot of downward movement on gold. It's been really just flat. It's been up and down, up and down. We had a very, very nice move from this low point up here. We had a very sort of almost 80% move. And now we've just gone down about 18%. And now we're sort of flat around the 12%. So gold really hasn't moved that much on the big picture things. And now it just looks like just looking at this here, it just looks like gold is is stuck in this range, but if we do start to take, if we do start to break out of here, then it does look like gold's ready to take on some serious price action again. When it looks at that, looking at the silver market, and silver the silver market is still quite, to me, it's still quite difficult because even though we have a lot of support and resistance lines, and let me just take all these lines off the screen, we're still stuck in this overall channel. We're making this, we're still stuck. And if I zoom in here, we're still stuck in this overall sort of resistance level through here. We had a lot of support through here and look what happened just recently. It came right up to that level and, and rejected it and now we're getting a bit of a pullback. So the question I'm looking at for right now is going to be, where is this going to break out? Is this going to be a break and run? So you can see what happened through here recently. We had support, support, we had a bit of a flush down and now we had a move up. I would personally like to see this thing create a bit of a higher low. So if we can maybe pull back a little bit and then create a higher low and then start to make a very nice move up. That would give me very confidence that one, this is an end of trend type of move. And secondly, this uh, this uh, silver market through here, this this would be a higher low, which the, which in an upward trend, we have higher lows, right? Higher lows breaking past these previous highs. So that'll be the big thing that I'm personally looking at for when looking at silver this week. Let's have a look at the uh, the mining sector here as well too. 
And I'm still very bullish the mining sector. What's happened right now is very, very, very interesting. And we can see that we had a, a lot of support around that. What's that level through there? So the $31 level, you can see we had a lot of support over the last 12 months. But you can see what's happened here. We actually broke down and now we've had a very nice strong rally to the upside. So looking at looking at this sort of V bottom action, there is a pretty high strong probability that this low here is probably going to be the low, the final low for, for quite some time and maybe even many years to come because I am expecting looking at the, the fundamentals of all these markets, I am expecting to see that this decade is gonna be the decade for the miners and metals, not so much about the equity market. Equity market is gonna have a pretty strong boom, I believe, and then a big crash. And then, but the overall big, the overall big long sustained bull markets, like we've seen in the equity market in the last 10 years, but not so much in the metals and miners, it's just gonna flip around, right? Because everything goes in cycles. And so, what what to me what the way i look at life or the way i look at history and the way i look at these cycles when it comes to these these big pictures is this is what was what was good in the last 10 years so what was good good in the last 10 years is probably not going to be so good in the next 10 years right it's just cuz this is just understanding a cycle analysis so what was good in the last 10 years is probably not gonna be good for these 10 years. So what was good in the last 10 years was the equity market, right? The equity markets probably, uh, for the next 10 years, we're probably not gonna be very, it's not gonna be a very good, strong bull market through there. So if you wanna see what's probably likely to be very good for investing purposes, uh, moving forward through the, through this decade, what's gonna be the what's gonna be the hot market to move forward? We'll just, look, let's just look at history. What was not, good in the last 10 years is probably going to be good right this is just understanding simple cycle analysis right because we know that everything goes in cycles there is an up and down period in everything right when, when we see big massive property crashes then we go through a period of stabilization and we go through another boom and then a flattening out period and you know everything goes in cycles so if we can see that what was not good in the last 10 years, this is to me, this is the metals and miners sector, really. And even maybe the, com the, the commodity sector as well too. So as, as inflation really picks up, commodities are probably gonna be really good. So the next 10 years, as inflation continues to pick up, we're going to probably, this next 10 years is gonna be really good, I reckon bullish. Now, not just, not you, you need to do your analysis here, but. But looking at what was not good over the last 10 years has been commodities, metals, miners. They're the ones that have been just, been just hammered for the last 10 years. So the next 10 years, um, the next 10 years, I do see that the metals, the miners, and the uh, the uh, the commodity sector as well too to be actually quite good as well too. So there's a bit of a recap for you guys that I'm looking at there on a technical basis, short term level. That's what I'm seeing here on a short term technical analysis level. And here's actually a bit of, bit of a big picture as well too of if you're looking to invest or, or in the what's likely to happen this decade, and you're buying hold type thing, then there's some things to think about, and maybe you want to start to look at some industries and some sectors and some things you're looking at there because right now. This is what's happening right now over the last 12 months in the metals and miners sector is exactly what you want, what you would see for then a slingshot move. Uh, it's the, the metals and miners sector has been really, 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 really quiet right now because not much is going on. And so therefore, because it's really quiet, the calm before the storm, I truly believe maybe next year, uh, it may be even start this year, but maybe pro probably next year, we're really going to see these sectors start to heat up for so if you guys are thinking about investing purposes then that's what you want to be should, that's what you should be thinking about moving forward traders i want to invite you to my webinar that i'm running today and on this webinar i'm going to share with you all the details to my number one trading system for the last 17 years and how i only trade one hour per day plus also you're going to be learning the three secrets that i had to master over the last 17 years to generate a really good income if you go to john's free training.com or there should be a link in the description click on that go over there right now register if you are struggling with the trading right now i promise you this is going to completely game change because you're going to understand you're going to understand why you are going backwards and why you're losing money 
And then I'm gonna teach you exactly what the system I use that gets me a really high percent win-loss ratio. So this is what I want you to do right now. Go to johnsfreetraining.com. Go over there, register for my webinar right now today because you're gonna absolutely love it. Or there should be a link in the description. And I look forward to seeing you on the webinar. So go to that right now and I look forward to seeing you on my next webinar. Go to that right now. Go to johnsfreetraining.com. Go to that right now.